Audi is taking the lead when it comes to offering premium electric sports cars in the country. They launched three earlier this year under the e-tron brand and now they've come with two more proper electric sports cars, the e-tron GT and the more powerful, more expensive RS e-tron GT. Now in the cabin, you get every feature that you expect from a flagship Audi car. The list is quite long. Sample this, these cars get an Audi virtual cockpit, MMI navigation plus with touch, BNO premium sound system with 3D sound, Audi smartphone interface and Audi phone box with wireless charging. That's not all. You also get air quality package, Napa leather upholstery, 18-way adjustable sports seats with pro massager and seat ventilation in the front, ambient lighting package, and three zone climate control. Now here's the big difference between these two cars is that the RS is more powerful, is quicker. So maximum power of 637 bhp. In fact, Audi says it is the most powerful production car made by the brand till now. A peak top figure of 830 Nm and 0 to 100 km per hour in just 3.3 seconds. When you talk about the range, this one gives you a maximum range of 480 km. The GT is slightly more at uh, 500 km. And talking about charging, well, using a 270 kW DC fast charger, these cars can be charged up to 80% limit in approximately 22 minutes. And finally, the prices of these two cars, the e-tron GT you see here is slightly more affordable at 1 crore 85 lakh rupees ex showroom. The RS will set you back by 2 crore 5 lakh rupees ex showroom. The good thing is that depending on where you live in the country, you might not have to pay any road tax. So just pay insurance and you're pretty much sorted with these two cars. To know more about the e-tron GT and the RS e-tron GT, Siddharth spoke to Balbir Singh Dilno, who is the head of Audi India. Is the flagship of performance and yes it happens to be electric that's the message from audi with this car and it is finally here in india and so with us right now is uh, balbir singh dhillon thank you so much it's uh, good to see you thank to you do the customary fist pump <laughs> and yes. launch straight into it you know yes we knew it was coming uh, you you and i have talked about this car in the past as well uh, but still a big moment the fact that yes. it's now arrived absolutely it is it's a very important day for us and after the success that we've seen with the e-trons that we just launched exactly two months back and we are so happy that we could bring this car and we could con convince our headquarters to give us these cars because we believe future is electric and it is becoming electric faster than we all thought of and thinking for the future. So I think all of us uh, are very very happy that we are able to get these both these cars and able to bring the you know fastest or the uh, strongest cars that Audi has ever built uh, to India and uh, we want to have all our customers in India enjoy these cars as they've enjoyed the other cars from and us. I have to add here for a sort of a reiterated benefit of everyone when you say faster that it's happening in India also a lot faster than what people expected uh, the response to the the e-tron and the e-tron sport pack I know you have told us this even on our platform in the past that you know it surprised you how quickly people came in and you know but but this fast I mean I, I heard you're sold out yes uh, so the first lot that we brought into the country we are sold out and now we are waiting for the second lot to arrive and it has actually surprised us as well so you know always when you bring the new technology to the country you have to be careful you don't uh, you know overdo things so we were cautious about this uh, but we got still got good number of cars and we are surprised the way customers are coming forward to embrace uh, electric mobility it is really really happy and I was mentioning to somebody else that you know we are also in touch with our customers who have bought these cars and uh, their kids of 8, 9, 10 years are influencing the parents <laughs> to buy electric cars yeah. because they're reading about this on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, one last point then, Balbir. You know, the uh, aspect that you mentioned on stage in your presentation about, look, we want to get to 15% of our sales from EVs, but there was a little sort of a caveat that everything else has to fall into place uh, in terms of policy, etc. What, what are those things that you might worry about which could come in the way? Because potentially you will go even higher than 15 if you can, right? Absolutely. So, you know, yes, uh, Basically, at the end of the day, though these cars have their own mileage, which is good enough to run on a day-to-day -day basis, but still there is a caution customers have in their mind about the charging infrastructure. So as we are trying to play our role, but at the end of the day, India is a very large country and the charging infrastructure has to be developed, let's say, by multiple partners together. So I think that is something which I was referring to. <clears throat> Secondly, 
at this point in time, I think uh, you, whatever is the price of these cars, it is still we are at the highest import duty levels. So these are some of the challenges we do see, and I continue to request the government to relook at these because once we have a decent number of cars on the road, we will be able to bring them, make them locally much faster. We need to reach certain minimum volume, a threshold volume before we start investing into uh, you know new manufacturing plants. We already have invested heavily into our existing plants. So these are some of the broad blocks and. Let's say there are some benefits at this point in time. The GST is 5%, so I only hope and wish that it continues to be there. And if it changes back to higher, it, it's a problem. Same is for registration taxes. In some states, it is at this point in time nil, but what if changes again goes back to the normal? So these are the challenges which I was referring to. So if the policies are stable and if they are favoring the electric mobility, sky is the limit. But the point that you made about you know doing this locally, which was going to be my follow-up, um, your 15% target assumes that some amount of local, no. so it could go higher than 15 in that case. If if we are able to manufacture locally, it could be much more than this. But when you say manufacture, of course, it would be a CKD yes. sort of a yes. thing. Yes. So um, why would you say today? Um, are you seeing this sort of bullish response from your customer? Is it the right information going to them at the right time, or is it just the fact that you know this the the time of EVs has arrived? The latter. I think the time of EVs has arrived. The whole and environment today the whole buzz today every day you open newspaper any news channel you know somewhere or the other you see this there is a push from the government for sure no doubt at the end of the day there is a there is a large force that is working in this direction which is government of india so it cannot happen without them pushing this topic but you will see the electric mobility i think in a major way it will start with two wheelers followed by four wheelers so that is what we we believe will happen uh, but it is happening faster than we thought of that is most more important to know. You, you know how plugged in I am. Yes. So I, I am definitely on the convinced side of things. But thank you. Thank uh, you. All the very best with this. I'm sure uh, you know it's, a, it's an exciting time for your dealers and customers as well. Absolutely. And uh, all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you.